you know the Lord is good. Put it in the comments. Yo, it is my sister's birthday, Connie Larissa Tate. She is celebrating her birthday today. So take a take a second. Show us some love in the comments. It's Larissa's birthday, y'all. It's Larissa's birthday. She's on Facebook. She's on Instagram. Go and show her some love today. That's who was just singing, if you don't know. That's our, our psalmstress, um, hymnologist, the one and only, often imitated but never duplicated, the original. The original songbird. And that's, and you know, because I know some of y'all, you wonder, Pastor Tate, where in the world do you get your vocal gifting from? Like, where does, like, did that just, is that just natural? And no, no, as you can see from my sister, um, I, I, it, listening to her at the house, it cultivated my gift. It cultivated my gift that the Lord has given me. So, in many ways, if you appreciate my singing, you you have to appreciate Larissa. So here's to giving me my voice. Thank you, Larissa. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. That's where I got it. That's where it comes from. That's where it comes. Secrets out. Secrets out. I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't want to tell nobody. But it's out. It ain't natural, y'all. I got it from my sister. I got it from my sister. You are good in the morning, I say. Ooh. So if I, go, I, I go too far. If I just stopped at you are good, you would have thought it was good. But in that morning, I say, it got a little, uh, and it was like, oh, it exposed me. It's so early, though. It's so early. Yo, let's get it. So love the world that he gave his only begotten Everything's son. Gonna be okay. And whosoever will believe in him shall not perish but have okay. everlasting life. <laughs> Yo, turn my mic up. Y'all ain't see this coming. Get ready to catch this. Come to snatch your righteous mind, not your edges. God is the goal, and then there's the period. This thing is real. Woo cha, we serious. Intentional, the original. God is in control. Do it for your soul. Gotta let the whole world know. Hey, yo, hey, yo. Yo, everything's gonna be okay. Uh, God's gonna make a way. Hey, let the people say everything's gonna be okay. Put it in the comments. Everything's gonna be okay. Shout out to uh, the Decure family, my my brother and sister, and just their whole family, Tanya and John. Grace and the rest of their siblings and their family. They lost their dad yesterday. Um, the great prophet, great man of God. I mean, what a great legacy. Um, so just keep them in your prayers. And I just want to encourage y'all everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. So stay encouraged. Um, but they're mourning uh, just a significant loss, a great. Uh, man of faith, one of the giants, one of the generals, one of the generals of faith is passed on. Pasadena legend. I mean, I mean, oh my goodness. If y'all been around Pasadena, y'all know uh, the great prophet. So praying for my family today, praying for my sister and my brother uh, today and, and all of their family. So y'all keep them in your prayers um, and just send them some love, send them some love. Yo, it's Thursday. It's Thursday. We out here trying to get through this week. 
we out here trying to get through this week. Y'all remember back in um in well, some of y'all won't remember this once I say this year, 1987. October uh 14th. Nine eight 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 nineteen eighty seven October fourteenth. I want to lean in, but then this angle gets a little crazy. So I'm trying to get my angles right. Got to get to get the angles right. Got to get the angles right. Yo, y'all remember the story of um of baby Jessica? Y'all remember baby Jessica? I talked about this in one of the services. Excuse me, this past weekend. Y'all remember the story about baby Jessica? It's a little girl. She was 18 months old in her aunt's um, backyard. It was seven years old, Albert. It was seven years old, Albert. Nice. She was in her aunt's backyard in an abandoned well. She fell in it. Remember, baby Jessica? She fell in this well 22 feet deep, 18 inches wide. And they couldn't get her out. The whole world stopped and tuned in. And I remember being a little boy and watching this story fixated. They dropped a micro a, a microphone down the well to keep um, tabs on her. And over the 50 something hours she was down there, they would hear laughing, crying, and little little mumbles. They couldn't get a full size person down the eight inch wide, twenty two deep, two, 22 feet deep shaft that was there. So what did they have to do? They had to go parallel to her shaft. To, to, to this to this well and drill down another shaft. So drilling down another shaft. And then once they drilled down, endless hours going, they drilled down, then they tunneled horizontally over to the shaft where she was where she was there waiting. <clears throat> He then tunneled over, everything being captured with the camera and the microphone, you could hear it. He gets baby Jessica and then brings her back over and then they bring them up the shaft that they drilled. Oh. The famous, infamous picture of them holding this dirty, uh, dusty, alive and well Jessica. The whole world celebrated. The whole world celebrated. In Mark chapter 1, verse 14 and 15, Jesus says, this about the gospel. This is how he describes the gospel. He says, Jesus went to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. He says this, the time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. <laughs> Repent and believe the good news. Mark chapter one, 14 and 15, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. The gospel is an announcement. It, it, it's, it's, it's not even historically a spiritual term. It is a term that uh, represents the um, it is a term that represents an announcement, uh, an, an announcement that uh, that the kingdom that that the kingdom has done something substantial, that the king has made a move 
uh, toward his people or that the king, a new king has been enthroned. It was it was an announcement. It was good news. It was like the Washington Post or the New York Times or or whatever, USA Today. It, it, it was the news and they would come and they would say, good news, good news, gospel. Gospel, I have a message. I have a I have a message that I want to display. And then they would announce this good news concerning the kingdom, concerning what is happening with the king. So culturally, when Jesus would have made this announcement about the kingdom coming nigh, that would have perked up in the ears of its listener because he was speaking of a different kingdom outside of Rome. He was speaking of a different kingdom outside of what they had seen and heard and experienced with the Caesars of the world, if you will. He was announcing a kingdom of God that had come near. So the good news, the gospel is really an, an, an announcement of God's kingdom and its new proximity to all of us. So the good news of the gospel is an announcement of the kingdom, of its proximity towards us. I guess what I wanna sit with today and what I want you to take with you in your day to day is that we were fallen Fallen in Satan's idea for us is to get us in a deep, deep pit of sin, so dark, so exiled, that we're completely living outside of our promise, our purpose, and who God planned for us to be. And he was winning that strategy. Satan had Satan had gotten to the world to where everyone was doing what was right in their own eyes. But for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and he sent Jesus. And Jesus didn't come down the well that we had fallen in. He didn't come through sin. Ah, he needed to dig another well. He came through righteousness. He, he came through love. He came through holiness. So he dug another well. And he got down as deep as we were, as deep a sin as we can get. His love drilled all the way down to the lowest and to the lowest. And then he tunneled over on the cross. He opened up those arms so wide that horizontally it could reach and capture and grasp all of humanity. So he reached over and he grabbed us in our sinful immaturity, in our infancy, and he pulled us near and pulled us, watch this, pulled us up through his righteous shaft, through his righteous tunnel, through his holy tunnel, and brought us up to the surface so that we might now walk in his holiness, in his righteousness, in his purpose. He came to save us from the deep, dark pit, from the tunnel, from the darkness that we'd fallen into. Can you imagine what it must have felt like even in 18 month old Jessica's mind to be isolated and alone and in the dark for 50 hours for all of a sudden for her to see the dust shake it and in the ground, the, the wall in, in where she is in that well literally open up and for her to see the headlight of the guy coming through there, for her to see that someone had come to get her. Someone else is here. And I don't even understand what all it means, but I know somebody has come in before they weren't here and now somebody's here. That's the announcement. When that wall was shaking and opening up and that dirt and that light pierced through, that's the announcement. That's the gospel. That is the declaration. That's what Jesus is saying. The gospel is the kingdom of God has come nigh. The kingdom of God has come nigh. And some of you were sitting in some dirty places. And I'm telling you, the dirt is shaking. The light is piercing through. And it is the gospel of Jesus Christ declaring to you that the kingdom has come nigh to your life, to your situation, to your season. The kingdom of God has come nigh. All you got to do is repent. 
and believe and go in the way of his righteousness, go in the way that he's paid for you. The kingdom of God has come nigh. He's met you. He's come to find you and deliver you in the pit. The kingdom of God has come nigh. Some of you need to be reminded of that today because it's dark out there. And he's come to turn the light on. Y'all, the kingdom of God has come nigh. That's the good news today. I don't care where you are, y'all, the kingdom of God is right there. Like the kingdom of God has come nigh. Baby Jessica was in there for a long time, but all of a sudden the dirt started shaking. The light started piercing in, and I'm telling you, somebody, the dirt is starting to shake. The light is piercing in because today the kingdom of God has come nigh. The kingdom of God has come nigh. Baby Jessica went on to the hospital. They treated her and old girl was fine. As a matter of fact, Discovery Channel did a, a follow-up on her in this article. She's married now and has lived a full life. Can I tell you on the other side of a deep, dark hole in a deep fall? On the other side of a deep fall, I'm telling you, the kingdom of God has come nigh. And he's got a, he's got a blessed life for you on the other side of this thing. Some of you, you in it so deep, all you can see is where you are. But I'm telling you, God already knows where you're going to be. Trust him. There's a blessed life on the other side of this. God didn't bring you this far to leave you. And he didn't bring you here to taunt you. He's come to deliver you. The kingdom of God has come nigh. <sighs> So take that in your day this week. I don't know where you need to invite the kingdom of God. I don't know where you need to invite the light of his hope and his peace in your life. But just know, he dug a deep shaft to make a way of escape for you. Now imagine, as, as we go, imagine. Imagine baby Jessica refusing to leave. Imagine her refusing to go. The whole world has waited on this moment. And in the moment when he arrives, she says, no, I ain't going. How devastating. How unfathom unfathomable. Like, no, you can't even fathom. Like, that. who does that? Who does that? Who does that? Who falls in a deep hole, exists in darkness, and have a penetrating light come open up and arms ready to rescue them, and they refuse to leave? Who does that? You tell me. Who does that? Who does that? I'll see y'all in the morning. Let's go! Everything.